Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x equals x squared plus 10x and f of f of a equals 11. So f is applied twice and we get 11. So the question is, what is a? What is this number? So we're going to be solving an equation and I'll be presenting two methods. But first, before that, let's go ahead and take a look at something that will complicate things because that's going to be fun. So f of a by definition is going to be a squared plus 10a. And since I'm trying to find f of f of a, uh, if I didn't know f of a and just directly evaluating f of f of a, then I would replace x with f of a, which would give me f of a squared plus 10 times f of a. But I do know what f of a is, sort of. Then I can just plug it in, replace f of a with a squared plus 10a, and then square it and then multiply it by 10 and add it to the first number and you'll get f of f of a. And guess what? This is equal to 11. Can you believe that? Okay, so we're supposed to find a from here and good luck with that because this is going to be a quartic equation. Let's go ahead and expand it without further ado. I'll give you what the equation looks like. a to the fourth plus 20a cubed plus 110a squared plus 100a minus 11 equals 0. Obviously, this equation is solvable. It's a quartic. There's a formula. And if you're trying to find the values of a from here, I don't think there are any rational solutions. So that's going to be a little tough, but you can use the quartic formula, which is quite complicated, by the way. Anyways, obviously, we're not going to do this because this is time consuming. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first method. This was not even the first method because this is kind of too long. Okay, that's the zero method. Okay, first method looks like this. I can go ahead and take it from here. Okay, take that and can I be lazy and just carry it like this? You know, I can just go ahead and bring it down here and don't, so I don't have to copy it. I'm just being lazy. Okay, and then erase the other guys and here we go. Okay, so this is my equation. And this is actually easy to solve. Why? Because I can use the power of, first power of the eraser, and then I can use the power of substitution. Yay! Substitution is awesome. So let's go ahead and call this b, and then this becomes b as well. And I get a very simple equation, b squared plus 10b equals 11. If you know a little bit of algebra, you're hopefully going to realize b is either 1 or negative 11. But if you want to put everything on the same side or add 25 to both sides to complete the square, so on and so forth, you'll get the same answer. Hopefully you get the idea. But always, always check for sum of coefficients because that gives you one as a solution. So those are the solutions for B. And we're going to take each one with this one. So if B is 1, what happens? And if B is negative 11, what happens? What is B? B equals 1, but B is a squared plus 10a. So this gives us a quadratic equation, 10 squared plus 10a equals 1. You can add 25 to both sides to complete the square, or if you want, you can use the quadratic formula. doesn't matter, but it's not factorable. So I'm just going to use uh, completing the square method, which is actually really cool, which is uh, where the delta, the discriminant, or the quadratic formula comes from. Make sense? So I added 25 to both sides, and then uh, the left-hand side now can be written as a uh, perfect square. And how do you find that magical number to add? It is actually very easy to find. If you know the coefficient in the middle, the coefficient of a or x or b, whatever variable, then cut that in half and square. So half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. That's how we find the number to add to complete the square. Even if it's a fraction, it works. So from here, we get two solutions by square rooting. a plus 5 is plus minus square root of 26. a from here is negative 5 plus minus the square root of 26. And are we solving for a or x? We are solving for a. Because if you remember, the equation gave us, or the original problem gave us something like f of f of a. So we're supposed to find a from here. Make sense? Cool. So these are the two of the a values. So. Let's go ahead and box them. And let's go ahead and take a look at the other solution because there were two values for b. The other one is negative 11. So if b is equal to negative 11, remember b was what? Do you remember? a squared plus 10a. 
Okay, so what do you do from here? Again, add 25, same thing, same thing, same thing. You see, you add the same number. This time you got 14 on the other side, and now this becomes a plus five squared. You see how easy it is to solve quadratics by completing the square? And square rooting, we get a plus five equals plus minus square root of 14. And finally, negative five adding, negative five plus minus square root of 14. Those are the other two solutions. So we got four solutions in total because we are dealing with a quartic equation, not quadratic, a quartic or quartic. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and we'll finish up with that. Second method. So the first method basically took advantage of substitution and the second method is also going to use substitution but in a slightly different way. Okay, cool f of x is x squared plus 10x, remember? Instead of, um, you know, completing the square, why don't we do it ahead of time? Let me tell you something. This method is actually really cool, especially if initially I was planning to do it, but then I was like too many compositions. I was like thinking about f of f of f of f of a, one, two, three, four, one, uh, equals something like 11, I don't know but then you have to do it so many times. So instead, I just simplify the problem and kind of came up with this as my final version, okay? Sometimes I simplify problems and some people complain about it. Uh, if th you think this problem is easy, um, don't complain about it, just find another method to solve it and share with us in uh, the comments section down below, okay? Cool, cool, f of x is equal to this. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write this as x squared plus 10x plus 25 minus 25. In the other cases, we had an equation and we were able to add something to both sides. This time, we're adding and subtracting the same number because our goal is to stick with the same expression but write it as, uh, what is it called? Uh, parabola in vertex form, right? And that is actually really cool. If you think about uh, parabolas, you can write any quadratic equation as this. This is the called the vertex form because h comma k, uh oh, h comma k will be the vertex in this case. Okay, too much information. Let's back up a little bit and continue with this. So this is x plus five squared minus twenty five. The twenty five will be gone. Okay, cool, cool. Now, f of a by definition, just plug in a, a plus five squared minus 25, but set f of a equal to c, and don't question it. Now, f of f of a is gonna be f of c, and f of c is 11, because we know that f of f of a is 11. You see, the power of substitution is like, power of substitution is it really simplifies things. Of course, you have to back substitute, but it's really cool, don't you think? We're solving a basic equation. f of c equals 11. So what is f of c though? This is f of x. So replace x with c. You'll get c plus 5 squared minus 11. Uh, I'm sorry, minus 25 equals 11. Make sense? From here, we're going to get this value of c, but there are only two values. So c plus, c plus 5 squared, I can't talk, equals 36. C plus 5 is either 6 or C plus 5 is negative 6. You could also put plus minus 6, but this is better. C is either 1 or C is negative 11. That puts us back to square 1 or whatever uh, with the first method. Now, what is C? C is F of A. Don't forget that. C is F of A, so F of A is equal to 1. But what is F of A? F of A is A squared plus 10A. And that is equal to, actually, there's a better form for f of a. f of a is a plus 5 squared minus 25. Set it equal to 1. Add 25 to both sides. And then you get the idea. a plus 5 is plus minus root 26. Uh, all white pages are coming up. Negative 5 plus minus square root of 26. And from here, f of a is negative 11. And a plus 5 squared minus 25 is negative 11. A plus 5 squared is 14. A plus 5 is plus minus root 14. And finally, A is negative 5 plus minus root 14. So those are going to be the A values that we've been looking for. And 
this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.